Hello! Let's talk about the impact of commercial activities on the environment. First thing we should talk about is agriculture. That's farming and creating lots of different things and growing things that we can then cut down, chop down, whatever we want to do and then eat or process and then eat. Fabulous stuff. Um, some little diddly little facts there, 58% of Australia's totally land use is used for agricultural activities. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. And we know that we're making things like um, sugar cane, which makes things that you use sugar for, which is lots of things really. Hmm, sugar. Oh, and there's, we were surprised when we talked about this in class, if you remember, we talked about cotton. I didn't even think we had cotton in Australia. I assumed we did, but not to the extent that it's one of the top five uh, things. So that was kind of awesome. Uh, wheat, well, wheat's great because that makes flour and things, and flour and things make cake. Pretty awesome. Oh, and then not, let's not forget our cattle, um, cows, sheep, all that kind of thing. So let's have a look at their impact, shall we? Impacts, wow. Um, I guess the biggest one, and this crosses over in between whether it's agriculture, timber, or, um, you know, like logging or um, mining, is that you're going to be clearing habitat. Wherever you clear habitat, there's issues with biodiversity because you start removing things that, you know, other little creatures or other plant life, you know, need, um, and all of a sudden it's gone. So that's kind of not cool. But let's move on, shall we? Um, remember the cattle I was talking about five seconds earlier, these guys? Yeah, they have an issue when it comes to water um, places like creeks and rivers and things like that because the cattle that we brought over have hard hooves, um, whereas the native Australian animals have soft paw pads. And that's a bit of an issue because um, when you've got soft paw pads, you don't really cause the erosion levels that you do when you've got hard hooves. So hard hooves are a bit of an issue. Um, they walk around the riparian area that's that um, groovy bit between the, the creek edge and, you know, the rest of the land up here. So they keep walking along there and eventually it, it collapses or they get soil compaction. Um, they increase the amount of sediments that go into the water, all those kind of things. So it's a bit of a pain in the butt, really. Um, but yeah, so hard hooved animals, a bit of a pain. We talked about the... Um, Salinity issue. Um, Australia has a huge problem with this. So when we start removing plant life, when we take all these plants away, like in this picture here, water naturally begins to rise because it's no longer being, you know, sourced out of by the plant. It's starting to rise and it comes up and then it touches the salt level and then it keeps going up. It takes the salt level with it. Salt level all of a sudden touches the soil at the top. And then, well, we all know salt means the land's pretty much useless. So nothing grows, so no animals are going to come along and want to eat there because there's nothing for them to eat. So um, salinity issues make the land pretty much pointless. So, And we have pockets of that all over Australia now because of where we've mass clear felled. Remember, in clear felled means that we uh, pretty much removed every single tree from that space. No, really that cool. Other issues to think about with all that, the sediments in the water and all that, you get a declining water quality, you get a substantial loss of topsoil because we keep turning it over while we're trying to grow things. We get a bit desperate because we know there's not many areas in Australia where we can get really decent soil. So we tend to um, maximise our use of that land and do what they call intensive agricultural practices. And uh, that's a bit of an issue as well. Other things we've talked about in class and briefly in this, habitat, biodiversity loss. If at this stage, you should pretty much know that that's self-explanatory when someone says to you, habitat loss, you go, oh yes, that's when the little house that the birds and the things like to live in is no longer there. Cool. Um, other things to think about, domestic animals, they come along and well, then predators that the native animals aren't used to seeing. They're not used to seeing wild dogs or, um, you know, Miffy the cat. 
coming along and catching all the native birds. And yeah, and we've got a bit of land degradation. Two other things for uh, agriculture. Let's have a look at introduction of weed species. We bring in uh, those yummy berries that you can grow and then eat. I like eating berries. Oh, and you know, they bring disease. They don't bring disease. We bring disease some other way, whether it's through another animal that we've brought into the country or um, us ourselves. And there's issues with plants just dying off. Um, and I'm going to get into a bit more of that in another lesson. So get ready for that. Um, and last but not least, algae blooms pop up every time you've got a you've got crops near um, water source because farmers like to fertilize their crops to ensure that they don't get eaten by uh, all the bugs out there and um, all that fertilizer ends up in the waterways water well, waterways can't process the fertilizer very well so you get your algae blooms algae think it's fantastic and uh, yeah the water looks funky fish can't breathe in it um, and so then you get that so that's agriculture. Now let's talk about uh, the timber harvesting industry. Okay, and I put another little interesting little fact there. They estimated that in 19, in 1788, sorry, um, that roughly 30% of the country was covered in forests. But then along come European settlers and they went, trees are awesome. We can cut them down and build houses. We can burn them in our fires because it's cold in the winter. We can um, make boats. We can do all sorts of awesome stuff with wood. I'll make you a chair. Do you want a chair? I can make you a chair. Let's just check this out. I'll cut this tree down. And they did that. And then they went, you know what? Over there, I would love to grow a crop. And so they did that as well. So they're things to think about. Um, but when we start doing things like that, you get soil compaction. And it ties in, by the way, with uh, mining because both industries and agriculture to a degree use heavy machinery and the heavy machinery compact the land. So you can see here there's like tire tracks and then there's sort of the, the dips there where the soil has now sort of squished together. When the soil is that compact, any trees or things that want to grow on top there and they want to make their little roots go down, they just can't. It's just not going to happen. It's too dense and too tight for them. So they just don't. So nothing will grow there. So that's an issue. Um, one thing to think about, what are quality and quantity? Obviously, if you're cutting things down and dropping them into the water, you're going to stir up sediments. They get washed downstream. Um, often we create dams because water is good for processing things as well, you know, because it's a running stream and we'll just use that. So we make a little dam. But the problem with dams is that the water's now not pumping out the same quantity that it used to downstream. So things, animals, plant life that are relying on it, uh, me and my little log cabin, I don't have a log cabin, but if I did, I'd be saying, hey, where's the water gone? There used to be more water than this, and there isn't now, so what's going on with that? So that's something to think about. And um, the quality of the water, you know, sediments and things happening there, <coughs> not cool. I put this mountain ash in here because it's beautiful and it's huge. They are, they grow up to like 100 metres tall. They're the tallest flowering tree in Australia. And they're pretty awesome. They're in the Otways. Um, and they're at risk. Uh, they're very popular. You know, like you cut one of them down. That's a huge wood source for a lot of people. And can you imagine walking in and going, this is my mountain ash table. It's fantastic. Yeah. No, it's not fantastic because they take forever to grow. So um, we want to preserve them. Um, but, yeah. Thinking along that. When you start removing the trees, you're going to lose not only those beautiful native trees, but you also lose the little guys that like to live in the same environment as those trees. Um, so I put in some little characters that make people don't tend to think about. They think about, you know, koalas. That's great. There's other guys that get affected. Like this dude here, I see him, he's pretty ugly. I'm not really a fan, but um, he's on the endangered list regardless of whether I like the look of him or not. Um, probably doesn't think I'm any better looking either. Um, 
but he's known as the Tasmanian burrowing crayfish and I thought oh, okay cool he likes to live underground but he actually likes to live underground but not in water like he likes water but not as much as he likes living underground so can you imagine he's not pretty impressed when all the trees in his area sort of die off or get taken away and then on top of that you get the salinity level start to rise and this little crayfish is like I don't really like salt and then he's gone so that's a shame so that's another thing to think about moving on to mining though uh, mining involves the disturbance of land yeah like we didn't know that was going to be the comment of the day about mining um, and yes yes it does have serious impacts on the environment let's talk about what they are so the first thing they are is the destruction of ecosystems and habitats yep I can see that right there in that image it's clear to me that there are no trees beyond that little little space there so once you get past there it's gone no more trees so all the things that used to live there either had to move on or get relocated depending on the process but then what if there's some kind of unique plant that's endemic to that area but not anywhere else in Australia or the world? And we don't know because we haven't had a really good look because, well, we don't really need to. We just need to dig it up. Big issue. Um, but as things start to happen, we discover that some species can adapt, such as the possum. We know this because there's possums in the schoolyard. You've seen them in the schoolyard. I've seen them in the schoolyard. I keep telling them to come into class, but they're not on my attendance list. Maybe that's the issue. But they're there and they adapt. They eat human food. Probably not a good thing because once the humans leave, they've got to try and readapt to their, to their old way of living with less habitat or none at all. The other thing is kangaroos. If you've ever watched that, I watched a great documentary about kangaroos. Kangaroos adapt to their situation, so if they look like they're not going to be able to eat for several months, they won't. They'll hold off their gestation. They won't produce any embryos that could, may or may not happen. So no little baby joeys will appear. So that's kind of fascinating. So they get to adapt, but that's about it really. Not many other things are going to adapt. So that's a bit of an issue. This is cool. This is called subsidence. And basically there's like air pockets and then after a while of mining the air pockets will um yeah collapse you ever heard of stories where the houses all of a sudden just randomly fell in a hole and it turns out years and years and years ago there was mining that happened there yeah that's why because yeah air pocket there goes your house but obviously that's going to have an impact on the environment too, whether it's aesthetic and just the look of the environment. Oh, hey, look over there. Oh, there's a hole over there. Or elsewise. So that's something to think about. Ooh, these are fairly obvious ones. Contamination of air, land and water. So if you have a look here, there's some pretty funky stuff going on in the water. Not really ideal. I wouldn't be drinking that. Probably the animals can't drink it either. And then over here, you've got your erosion. Um, you can see the tracks. Once they finish mining, they're out of there and they're coming back. All the resources are gone. But this is going to take forever to recover. So that's probably not that cool. Along with all that erosion comes sedimentation. We talked about that. That's that stuff where sediments get washed in. Sediments being little bits and pieces. They get washed into the water. And then away they go. That water's probably not that good. The quality's right down there I wouldn't be drinking it wouldn't really be probably many fish in there if there are they're probably not going to be that happy that they've got to live with sediments now uh, processing chemicals and pollution oh this is a groovy little graph have a look at this you got you got little um, industri industry and mining activities and there's clouds and they go up there because it's getting released into the atmosphere and then it releases down into the water source well and you've got other stuff like oil and all that kind of stuff runoff so that's a really cool little diagram so maybe keep that in the back of your mind um, and last but not least minerals are finite not infinite finite meaning once they're gone they're gone you can't replace them so that's another thing to think about